Um, this is a response to, I hope I'm saying this right, Grandma Stola's um, video about how our universe, which seems to be finely tuned to favor our existence, um, implies the existence of a designer. For the benefit of others who are watching this video, I will be explaining and defining some things that the original poster probably understands perfectly well. So forgive me if some of this seems tedious. What I want to do is explain why a universe which seems as finely tuned as ours does not necessarily require a designer. I will concede that our universe is a remarkable place and there may very well be a boundary that our observation and our theories are unable to break through. But until that time comes, and it may or it may not, we must continue to seek rational theories that can be tested by observation and experimentation, even if the means to do so are beyond our current technology. If we just throw up our hands and say, God did it, we have not explained anything, excuse me, and we are doing a disservice to future generations. Now, in the context of this debate, I do not see a problem with belief in a designer, as long as it does not enter the theoretical discourse. Intelligent design is not a scientific exp explanation, and thus it has no place in a scientific theory. Now, personally, I am an atheist, and I can go on and on about why I think religion is a poison to our culture and why we should abandon it as soon as possible, but that is not what I'm talking about right now. If an intelligence designed and created this universe with the specific intent of human intelligence emerging as a product, it certainly had to have known in advance that we would discover quantum mechanics and make theories about the origins of life, the universe, and everything. If we were not meant to discover these things for ourselves, God could just as easily have told us what we needed to know. Now, I have read the Bible and the Quran, and I haven't found anything about relativity, the strong nuclear force, or thermodynamics. If you were to ask a Pastafarian, the force of gravity is actually caused by one of the flying spaghetti monster's infinite number of noodly appendages pulling every object where it is supposed to go. Let's call that intelligent fallen. The theory of intelligent design is about as valid. Until God literally tells us where our boundary of inquiry is, or what he just did, and what is a logical consequence of the laws that he put in place, we have an obligation to assume that that boundary of understanding is not there. Now, you seem to kind of scoff at the idea of a universe evolving. While I do have to admit up front that the idea is currently beyond the range of experiment and observation, so is the theory of an intelligent designer. That being said, there is a scenario where universes could be said to evolve. It can be argued that our universe is better at producing black holes than it is at producing life. Another way of saying this is that the purpose of the universe is making black holes. Now, at the center of every black hole is a gravitational singularity, which is an infinitely small point that is infinitely hot, has infinite density, and infinite mass. Its gravity is so strong that the fastest thing in the entire universe, light itself, is not fast enough to escape once it has crossed the boundary of the black hole, which is also known as the event horizon. It would take a whole other video to explain why but the laws of physics as we know them break down inside of a black hole. They do not work. The rules do not apply. Which is exactly what a lot of theists 
say about the supposed creator of the universe. The main difference here is that for black holes we have a verifiable mathematical model that explains how they form and why they exist. We cannot say the same for our intelligent designer. Now there is another kind of singularity that we have mathematical and observational evidence for. The Big Bang. In a nutshell, the Big Bang theory states that the universe has a finite age and it began as a singularity. For reasons that are currently beyond our comprehension, space and time both began at the moment when the singularity began to expand and cool down. The formation of matter, energy, galaxies, stars, planets, living things, and human consciousness can all be traced back to the Big Bang. Now if you want to know more about why we are as certain as we are about the Big Bang, I highly recommend Simon Singh's book, Big Bang, appropriately titled. Um, it is quite accessible to the layperson, and it is also a beautiful illustration of the scientific method in progress and the process of discovery. I will not list the specific reasons here, but trust me when I say that it is virtually certain that the Big Bang did, in fact, occur. What is not certain is what started it and why. Okay, so where am I going with all of this? For the sake of argument, I propose five assumptions that can form the basis of a theory of evolving universes. So number one, our universe appears to be finely tuned, which is to say that it is governed by a relatively small amount of relatively simple equations and changing the values in these equations by even a small amount would result in a universe that did not favor the development of life as we know it. Number two, a gravitational singularity is a point of infinite energy, mass, and density. As such, its true nature is currently beyond the realm of our understanding. Number three, even though we don't know everything about singularities yet, we do know of two conditions where they occur. The Big Bang and inside of a black hole. Number four, Evolution has two requirements, the random variation of inherited characteristics and non-random reproduction. Number five, our current understanding of singularities does not exclude the possibility that universes are created inside of black holes. Given these assumptions, there are only two required ingredients for a valid theory of evolving universes. The first of which would be the observation that indeed universes do indeed form inside of black holes. As of right now, we cannot know one way or the other. It is beyond our comprehension. Number two, if universes are formed inside of black holes, then all we need is for the child universe to inherit some of the characteristics of the parent subject to a degree of random variation. Now this is a possible but incomplete explanation. Intelligent design is another possible but incomplete explanation. And what I want to ask is, which one of those two scenarios is more likely to become experimentally verifiable in the foreseeable future? New discoveries and theories at the boundary of our understanding inherently push the boundary back. Until we reach the true barrier, placing responsibility on an intelligent designer whose workings are forever beyond our grasp is nothing more than throwing in the intellectual towel. Again, this is a separate idea from belief in a designer. I only wish to assert that a designer has no place in a scientific discussion.